Hello, true duelists. My name's Craig Fee, and welcome to the New Card Report. Legacy of Destruction is here on the 26th, so you know what that means. We get a look at the new TCG exclusives and to look at the second wave of Ashened and decide if they follow the trend of horrendously underwhelming second waves of support that TCG decks get because I guess Konami is really, really deeply regretful of Spiral or something. Who knows? Well, let's take a look and find out. And you, you can probably you can probably guess which one it's going to be, whether they're good or bad, because 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 these right here, but you would take an educated guess. Shaman of the Ashen City is another level four dark pyro for the deck with 1300 attack and 1200 defense that has the standard ability to special summon itself from your hand if the Ashen field spell is in a field zone and can target three pyro monsters in your grave and or banishment and shuffle them into the deck. And that's it. That's the whole effect. Unless you shuffled back at least one Ashen monster that is, in which case you can add a copy of the field spell from your deck to your hand. That's cool. I like that it almost implies you could like run a volcanic or snake eye engine or something. I really doubt you ever would, but it's doable. It just shuffles pyros back. I don't really care for it needing to have to send three pyros already before it does anything for you at all. But if you already have the field spell and priestess, you can make an infernal flame banshee, which searches anything else in the deck. So it being four isn't nothing at least. He said coping as hard as he possibly could when looking at this thing. Spearhead of the Ashen City, meanwhile, is another level four for the deck. Another Dark Pyro, this one with 1700 attack, 100 defense, and the fucking Bolt of Grand Sacks. My god, his faith in decks must be damn high. This one can of course summon itself from the hand if there is the field spell in a field zone as is standard. And while the opponent controls a monster with 2800 attack, you can tribute this card to target one card they control and bounce it to the hand. Why does it need to tribute itself? for a conditional bounce? Or why couldn't it be a quick effect so as to meaningfully impact the opponent in some way? These are the sorts of questions you might ask if this were a regular deck being introduced in the set, but it's not a regular deck. It's a TCG exclusive one, and this is wave two. So, you know what, that, there's, this, there's a saying about this. When it comes to TCG wave two, you know it's gonna be poo. And that's because you're not allowed to say shit, otherwise you get banned from YCS. <laughs> I don't know, the best thing uh, you can do with this conditional bounce, of course, is to bounce a poplar left in the opponent's spell and trap zone in a stake eye match. This will then trigger their poplar and allow them to gain more advantage so as to end the duel earlier and you can stop playing Ashen. This isn't good in terms of you winning, but it is funny to imagine. For what it's worth, this effect is the opposite of the Bolt of Grand Sacks, and I, I mean, I used that shit on Gideon, and I made him a fucking skid mark on the ground. He didn't even get up. Dude, I fucking, duh, boom, three times, and that man was dead, and then I ran on to fight Horalu because that's just what you do in Elden Ring, and I just really want to say, seeing something that so visually represented the character I played in Elden Ring be so goddamn dog shit in this card game, uh, was was uh, not not cool. Visually, it's dope. Not not much else is good about it though. <laughs> Vidos, the Dragon of Endless Darkness, is a new fusion monster for the deck because fuck it, why, did, why would we expect anything other than a random arbitrary fusion to be thrown into this strategy? It is at least dope and shit in terms of both name and art, and it's a level 10 dark pyro with 3000 attacks, 1700 defense, and will need Vidos, the Eruption Dragon, and two level 9 or lower pyros as material. This card cannot be destroyed by card effects and will be untargetable by the opponent, and on fusion summon can even feather duster their back. Grow. Isn't that groovy? Its other effect activates when the opponent activates a card or effect on the field, and you can quick effect destroy that card. So it can fuck over continuous spell and traps pretty well, but is useless in so many other ways. It doesn't negate the card that it destroys, so effects will be resolving, again provided they aren't continuous spell or traps, or I guess field spells and equip spells. And while that's not nothing, what is nothing is the absolute nothing burger of this not being able to pop any other card that would activate in the hand or elsewhere. Maybe at least a, a stop of a cheeky summon for a card effect that activates in the hand. But no, this, this isn't a bad card overall, but it is very underwhelming for a boss monster needing three cards to get out for very little payoff. Looks fucking sick though, probably will buy it. 
Embers of the Ashen is at least an alternative. A level 8 Pyro Fusion, needing any two Pyro monsters for a body with 2900 attack and 2400 defense. On Fusion Summon, this can take a field spell from your graveyard and add it back to your hand, which is neat to see in a deck with a field spell that already puts itself back in the deck to recycle it anyways. Why not? The other effect will only trigger in the battle phase, and that is if it battles an opponent's Pyro Monster. It will destroy it at the start of the damage step, so I'm sure that's gonna come up. So it's just gonna be the most abundantly used effect, isn't it? And if it's your turn, it can even make a second attack afterwards. That's crazy. Each effect is only once per turn, of course, so don't worry. You can't ally of justice catastrophe two of your opponent's monsters. That would just be too crazy. And of course, it will only work when you make all of your opponent's monsters pyros, which I, I guess the field spell does on your turn, but good God, does that feel weak. Why is the generic synchro from 2009 stronger than the hard niche type specific fusion from 2024? Who is designing these? Why make them look this cool and be this fucking bad? That's just cruel, man. That's gotta constitute bullying on some level. Rekindling of the Ashen is a new quick play spell, because we're, we're just moving on from that shit. And while you may hear Rekindling on a spell card name and see Pyro cards, don't worry, this is a TCG exclusive wave two. This card will take an Ashen card from your Grave or Banishment and then put it on the bottom of your main deck, and then target an opponent's monster and negate that card's effect until the end of the turn. Isn't that fancy? So that's actually not terrible in that it's a monster negate and a quick play spell, so it's versatile, but it does require you to put an Ashen card onto the bottom of your main deck. And while it's super niche and really not ever gonna come up, why can't it recycle the fusions? Like what is the consequence of you getting the world's shittiest Cataster back to use this effect? And even then, is this effect worth using when infinite and permanence exist? I don't really know that it is. Granted, I guess it's searchable in some capacity, but like, does that really matter? Like, <laughs> clearly Konami designed this archetype entirely with players wallets in mind. If they suck, they're affordable, right? Or I'd say that if I could explain this shit, because imagine paying this much money to fucking lose. My God. I will, of course, wait till it drops in price and or gets a reprint to then pay one eighth of that price to go and lose, like a, like a sensible young man. Extinguishment of the Ashen, meanwhile, is a new normal spell for the deck. And look at that, it's a neat little foolish burial. On activation, it'll send any dark pyro monster from the deck to the graveyard, and then you can add a level five or higher dark pyro from your graveyard to your hand. And for Using this wacky rota of sorts, you'll of course be locked into only special summoning pyro monsters for the turn. So, uh, <laughs> you can tell I wrote this part a little while ago. It says no horse ladies allowed once again, but Konami already assured you no horse ladies are allowed. So, no generic anything at all. No apos, no SPs, no good cards when you're playing Ashened. It also has an effect in the grave to banish itself and be polymerization for pyros. Fusion summon a pyro fusion monster using materials from your hand or grave. So that's that, that's cool. Once again, the polymerization effect is slapped on as a bonus grave effect, which are, uh, you know, it's fine. That I think that's good. It's better than just getting a poly that does nothing other than be polymerization in an archetype. And it is foolish burial or rota or a Foolish Burial and Monster Reincarnation all in one, depending on what it is you're adding to your hand if you choose to do so. It just sucks with the Pyro Lock, because we're looking at a deck whose Wave 1 big play was a quick play Regeki of sorts through a series of contrivances and a trait that isn't even unique to fucking Pyro decks, because I'm gonna tell you about a card called Volcanic Scattershot, and I think that's a little more reliable and just better than fucking Vidos' nuke effect is, so. We're doing great, Konami. Everything, everything's just fine. And last up is Ashened to Endlessness. A continuous trap, this card will let you fusion summon a pyro fusion monster using cards from either player's fields material, including Vidos, the really cool red looking dragon of this deck that is the official name of course and I totally did not forget its real one. That fusion monster will of course gain 500 attack for each material used as your little lovely little bonus. And don't worry, it has a grave effect too, able to banish itself from the grave along with one dark pyro to make all your opponent's monsters become pyro type until the end of the turn. Why the fuck do I need two copies of this to like make it effectively good? What? Why? 
Why do I need to have one in the grave to banish to be able to make my opponent's monsters to ultimately just use Super Poly? Because that's what you're gonna have to fucking do, right? The field spell only makes them pyros on your turn. And it makes the opponent's monsters pyro. So it's going to make, even if you give the field spell to the opponent, that field spell is gonna make your monsters pyro on their turn. It's useless. It doesn't do what you want it to do, which means you need to have a copy of this already banished and used from this turn to use the goddamn fucking effect. To mean, to actually meaningfully use it as a super poly on the opponent's turn to disrupt them. And we know that, 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 that a super poly from a trap on the opponent's turn isn't out of line because the U-Bell support exists. So why? Why is everything in this deck just a weaker form of something else? I don't get it. You can use this on your turn. Yeah, with your field spell, making the pyros, but the, that's not gonna really impact the duel too much because Yu-Gi-Oh is about interaction and playing a both player's turn to some amount. That's what fucking trap cards inherently are. Oh my God, I, I don't understand Konami's steadfast refusal to even give this deck a chance. This here, I think, really encapsulates not only the Wave 2 support in general, but also the deck at large. It's not enough, and it's weirdly disjointed from the game by and far. Ubel has a stronger of the version of the Super Poly that this deck has. Volcanic has a stronger Regeki of the version that this deck has. And fucking Ally of Justice has a better Cataster than this deck has. There's no way we got better cards from the first wave of a line of series of packs that aged so horrendously poorly that the nostalgia reprint of those sets hidden arsenal chapter one is like the worst selling product in the fucking game's history come on dude hey, but hey it's lore accurate because souls games are hard so by playing uh, yeah, a deck like Ashen that looks like a Souls game, it's it's referencing the lore because it should be tough to win because game hard. This truly is the Dark Souls of Yu-Gi-Oh! Shoutouts to Lindell, the Ashen whoops the trees fucking burning. At least that city had an ancient somber smithing stone. Obsidim only has mediocre cards that feel weaker than fucking Neospatian Grand Mole from like 2006. And the, the one of them has the bolt of grand sacks, dude. How do you make that shit weak? And so I don't have anything else to say. It's just a very disappointing wave two of support. I do, however, have a product to sell you because I am a shill. A shill for the LIFD magnetic display. The true duelist approved way to support my channel and the best way to prove you're a true duel. I have a line I normally say here, butchered it completely. The point is the promo code's YGOSTRATS15. You can type it into the checkout, you can click the link in the description, and you can get 15% off the single card display here or the tri-set, whatever you're feeling. You can also instead bring this deck to locals and have a much better time. And I'm saying that with the full knowledge that Cosmo really sucks today, and Bricking and Cosmo Town and Ash Blossom and a, 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 mil, a million other things, but let me tell you, at least it ain't ashened. That, that shit is trashened, but not the LIFD magnetic display, so please buy one if you'd kindly. And so, that's it. I don't have anything else to say about this pathetically underwhelming wave two. I instead will bid you adieu. Haha, -ha, it rhymes so it's true. Three Pete motherfuckers. Please hit subscribe. I'll be here next week and tomorrow actually in the update. And, 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 and when you subscribe, you'll impress your smoking Italian wife, you'll become a true duelist, and you will make me feel marginally better about having wasted my life doing all of this work just to talk about cards you've already seen Joshua Schmidt talk about. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Spearhead of the... Well, 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 well.